Okay, this video is going to be about CRTD, best of my ability. And uh, here is the back side of the White House. Um, that's the Corcoran Museum, which went bankrupt. It's uh, still an art school. But here's the White House over my shoulder. And uh, this is the, the police to get in. None of this used to be here, by the way. When I was younger, you could just walk through here. Uh, we all did. We used to play softball in the ellipse right down there. But there's the back side of the White House. I'll see if I can get a better picture for you. It's the one you see a lot on, on the news. Here's the uh, Washington Monument. And right now I'm going to walk down. I'm trying to go to the uh, Lincoln Memorial, um, where I'm hoping to see Jimmy Dore, Ger Gerard, Gerald Salente, and Tulsi Gabbard, and others. Um, but I want to show you the museum I've been a part of. Well, I'm just a member now. Uh, but I was on the board of for, uh, I don't know, uh, uh, 10, uh, 4, I don't know, at least 16 or 17 years, maybe 18 years I was on the board. But anyway, here's the, here's the um, Washington Monument. And there's the back of the White House. And I guess this is where you go into the White House. So anyway, on CRTD, um, I, I think, I'm going to tell you, I think there's a couple of things that concern me. And I don't know if I should start out with those with you or not, because I don't know if that's particularly good salesmanship. I'm going to go across the street because there's a lot of people. I want to avoid the people. So this is the Red Cross, right? And then there's the Daughters of the American Revolution. You guys should come visit D.C. Anyway, I think I'm going to go with the, what I think are the exciting upsides of CRTD. One, Tom Gronk put out that there's 375 million, whatever you want to call them, counterfeit, fake, fraudulent, failed to deliver shares in CRTD. And that's versus a float that's well less than 10 million shares. Now, the, they, they recently expanded the outstanding shares from um, 30 million to about 52 million. But that's okay. They raised a little bit of money. Um, they have a viable company. And, uh, you know, the rate, call it 400 million shares now that a, a couple of months have gone by or months gone by you know you can adjust it i'm just back of the enveloping it and call it 50 million that's still a huge multiple of shares that have to be bought back versus shares that exist most of those shares are restricted and are not even trading uh or not trading yet um okay we're gonna god it's beautiful here in dc beautiful I'm, I'm so late for this protest. Maybe I'm doing that on purpose. Um, but I would like to see Tulsi Gabbard, and I really like to see Jimmy Dore, and I really like to see Gerard, Gerald Salenti. Um, anyway, so there's an enormous a number of shares to be bought back, and I think when GTII goes, CRTD is going to go with it. Um, I think they have a tremendous CEO in in uh, Jeremy Fra Frommer, 
and he knows what to do. He knows what to do with here. I'm going to show you the OAS building. This is uh, where we had a lot of events, but the OAS building, the Organization of American States, is a tremendous facility built, I think, he was a large president. Was it Grover Cleveland? Uh, so it's a hundred years, over a hundred years old. But this is who owns the museum. And I think I can walk through here. I, we, I used to anyway. Let's see if, if they stop me, they stop me. And I'll have to tell you, oh, there's no, there's no walkway there anymore. Oh yeah, there is. Um, I'm going to walk down that way. Anyway, um, so CRTD has a tremendous CEO who knows the prime brokerage business. He knows how to catch out the shorts, the counterfeiters, and I think that's great news. Um, he, Jeremy Frommer said on his last public call, that he is moving aggressively to get the OG collection distributed. And uh, as an exclusive upstream listing, it's going to be valued at $10 million initially because a private investor put money in at that level. But remember, that investor didn't put money in because he thought it was worth less than $10 million. He probably didn't put money in because he thought it was worth only 10 million. Okay, here's the back side of my museum. It's so nice. I w I'll be back involved, I hope soon. Um, here's the back of the museum. It's absolutely gorgeous. Um, there's a sculpture garden over there. This is the loggia right in front. That's the offices of the museum. And we used to have tremendous parties here uh, right off near the White House and I'll walk around the front you can see the front I'm getting close to the to the rage against the machine war machine uh, gathering at the Lincoln Memorial um, okay so the OG collection has staff, and I, I'm doing by memory, but I think they have four curators. It has a valuable asset. It is making money. And uh, when it's listed, oh, it's open. I could go in. I'm not going to go in now. Uh, here's our exhibits. Here's our exhibits. Well, it's not me anymore. <laughs> OAS and American, there's the Art Museum of the Americas, Art Museum of the Americas. And it's a tremendous museum. I highly recommend it. It's, for me, it's a perfect museum. I love, I love being able to go in and not spend more than an hour or two, or you spend more if you want. Um, but like if you go to the Louvre, uh, <laughs> It's just a zoo. It's like being in a shopping mall. I love going. There's the Federal Reserve. Do you see it in the background, the white building? That's the Federal Reserve. Uh, all right, I'm going to go down. National Airport is right over there, Virginia. It's an amazing city. It's an amazing city, D.C. Um, so anyway, this OG collection is worth $10 million. It's going to be distributed soon. Right now, there's about 32 million shares um, of CRTD, but the S1 will be approved. There's no reason why it shouldn't be. The money's already been accepted. The deal's already been struck. So I expect um, that, that the value of that distribution to you will start out at around 19 cents a share, 19 cents a share. Basically, you're taking 10 million and dividing it by 52 million, whatever that number is. 
I think that'll be announced soon. Jeremy knows exactly how to put pressure with this, as he calls it, corporate action on the back offices and keep the pressure, keep the pressure on it. I, I'm so, we're so blessed with these blue skies, nice weather, but we're, we're only about 250 miles, I think, 300 miles from East Palestine, they call it, Ohio. Pretty frightening. As John F. Kennedy says, we all inhabit this, we all live on this same small planet. We all breathe the same air. And I'm going to give you, this is so nice, what you're going to see right now. Sorry for the wind. It might be making noise. But there's the Washington Mon Monument. The mall goes that way. It's all the Smithsonian museums. This right here I want to call this the Tidal Basin, but I think that's not the name of it. Um, but I'm walking over to the Lincoln Memorial this way, and um, I'll find out what this is called. But over here is the Vietnam War Memorial, which is truly a um, spiritual experience the first time you go through it. So anyway, uh, that's 19 cents. So right now you're paying 45 cents a share for CRTD. Um, I think it's 46, 44, I, I can't remember, but it's basically 45 cents a share. Let's call that 20 just for a simple arithmetic. You can adjust it later. So you're risking, you're risking 25 cents to be bought out by GTII announced for $100 million. That number now is, is reduced from 333 because of the increase in number of shares to, uh, and the increase, by the way, happened because of financing they did in, in September, approximately. So um, it comes down to about $1.90 a share. So you're, you're, you're gambling 25 cents to participate in an acquisition price of, I'm stuck here now. If I go here, I can't get out, so I have to go this way. Um, I can hear the music. It doesn't sound too good. Um, Wow, what a beautiful city. Look how beautiful. <laughs> Cute little kid. He's excited with the ducklings. So anyway, you're, you're, you're betting a net 25 cents approximately to get almost $2 in an acquisition. And that was announced. They have a month to get that, like three weeks to get that accomplished. Uh, and I think they will. Um, uh, Jeremy knows how to make the back offices reconcile almost 400 million counterfeit shares with a public float of around 10 million and existing shares of around 52 million. And, it, and when, if and when a squeeze occurs, it's going to be massive. Um, I think the thing that could make it go is the distribution of the OG collection. And uh, by the way, it'll start at that value of 19 cents. It could be worth double that or two-thirds more as we're speaking. Here's the Washington Monument. It's 
absolutely gorgeous. Um, so, now I'm, I'm just going to give you two concerns, uh, which I don't think are, are big yet, but it's just things you have to be aware of. Jeremy does not believe that the Lynn Partners guy, Jeff Easton, is smart enough to, uh, this is what he said on a space call, it's my interpretation of what he said on a space call, Jeremy, that Jeff Easton is smart enough to sell 300 million counterfeit shares. And uh, Jeremy believes, at least he stated, that it's a problem with computers. And so the volume of buying overwhelmed the computers and the computers are just set up to fill your order and that's without locating shares and that's where all this excess supply is. I, I personally, although Jeremy's much sharper, smarter than I am, um, and he did go to SUNY Albany uh, and London, um, I just respectfully disagree with him. Um, if he were right, one, why would the stocks get crushed? He did a financing with Lynn Partners and Benchmark Capital above market, and his stock proceeded to be absolutely attacked down to four cents. If the computers were just filling orders to buy, that's what he's saying, that the buying overwhelms the amount of shares available, why did it go? Why did his stock go from over two dollars down to four cents? I, I just don't think the evidence supports uh, what he's thinking, but God bless his heart, he, see, he sees goodness in Wall Street and goodness in these people. And I no longer believe any of these men and women who are stealing from you by counterfeiting shares are any good at all. Look at the computer. I'm sorry, look at the plane coming in. Can you see it? This is uh, the approach to National Airport. And it's, it's quite amazing that you could live this close to the airport at Southwest. Anyway, um, so my one concern there is I'm not sure that Jeremy understands that the whole system is corrupt and not everybody in it. I, I think he's right. Most people on Wall Street are good and they have no idea. But there's these um, thieves that take advantage of the system, push it to the limit. Their, their greed knows no bounds. And um, I think Benchmark Capital refers people to the Lynn Partners and the Lynn Partners sets up um, toxic convertible notes with warrants and tranches. And I think the Lynn Partners not only sells before they fund, thereby just giving the companies their own money, they continue to sell afterward. Their goal is to trap a company into their financing such that such that they um, can profit from the massive decline in the stock from two, let's say 250 I don't you'd have to look at the chart down to four cents and then and I don't think Jeremy recognizes this his company was on the verge of extinction no matter how good his story no matter how good he was and he would have and I, to his credit he did not he would have either had to reverse split his stock which is a death now as we as i hope you've learned by now and uh and or taken another toxic financing probably from the lynn partners and to jeremy's credit he said no to that but jeremy has some investors who not only believe in the company and believe in him, I think they deserve credit for making the stock a uh, short-term success. So one of my concerns is 
that this good, courageous, smart, knowledgeable man doesn't understand the threat to his company. Now you can argue, what? who the hell am I? And that, I wouldn't have an argument with you on that. I really wouldn't have an argument with you on that. But I just got to tell you what I think. My second concern with G CRTD is when I looked through the SEC filings, Jeremy was on the verge of doing a financing. And I hope that's dead. I, I think by now he's learned that that's not the way to go. And my final concern is Jeremy admitted, all right, here, here is the Vietnam Memorial. I'm going to walk quickly through it, and I'm going to stop talking out of respect for these fallen uh, heroes. All of the name, all of the names, all of the names of the fallen are here. Okay, thank you for letting me be quiet. These young men, and they were all men, the woke generation forgets as they believe their mothers that somehow men have all the advantages, that it's men who die in wars, men. This is over 50,000 men who lost their lives defending you. This, right behind all this, is the, that's the State Department. And over there, that new modern building is, an, is the Institute for Peace. Let me, there's people here, let me, I'll walk over there so you can see it. Oh Lord, I gotta go listen to speeches. It's gonna be like being on an MMTLB space call. I'm just teasing. <laughs> I love being on those calls. I admire each and every one of you that is fighting. It's just like these guys. But my attention span sometimes is so low. All right, over there in the distance is a new building, the um, Institute for Peace. And behind this white 
memorial behind it is the United States State Department. My dad, uh, he always say, Bill, there's not a lot of money in peace. But my father uh, was a senior fellow at a, I think a prestigious school here um, in the peace department. Anyway, uh, uh, I, I was on my third concern, and now I don't remember, I remember where I left you off. But my concern is, is that uh, Jeremy might believe that he can do a different financing. And he admitted on his call that he's presented a counter proposal to GTII in the acquiring. And that just, it just brings up to me all sorts of issues of, well, is the deal done or not? Are they committed to the deal or not? So those are my concerns. Now let me counteract those concerns quickly. Jeremy it has every incentive to make the merger happen because he's going to be the CEO of the whole thing. Also, I think GTII might be the one that moves first and CRTD will benefit from that. But uh, either one could go. They're both powder kegs. And then uh, uh, finally, I'm sure it's just negotiations. I think they're going to I think they're going to uh, come to agreement. And let me just show you the, here's the, the Lincoln Memorial. The Lincoln Memorial. This sounds like Gerald Salente. Can you hear him? Sounds like Gerald Salente. Let's find out. He's got to put some F words in it, F bombs. Okay, Jenny. Okay, Jenny. It, it is Gerald Salente. Here's the Lincoln Memorial, uh, the, the pool. That is Gerald Salente. I can't see him. He also, on his way out, Donald Trump tore up Ronald Reagan's great achievement in well, intermediate nuclear forces treaty of 1987. And George Bush that was a mistake. That was a mistake. So anyway, let me... This is Gerald Salente calls it as he sees it. Calls it as he sees it. That's not Gerald Salente. It's not Gerald Salente. Now, the Biden administration told the media that they were carefully calibrating the amount of um, weapons I'm going to end this now, Ukraine but what I want to tell you... To deter Russia from attacking without provoking them into doing so. <laughs> now, either they're really terrible at, at calibration and deciding uh, just how many weapons to pour in to prevent a war, or they were lying about that, and they were trying to cause a war. And even though that might sound a little conspiratorial, there's very good reason to think so. Yeah. It's clear that in the run up to the war, the All right, I'm, refused to engage in any He He just trashed Trump, too, so don't that. get all upset. He's mad at everybody. And, uh, not only that, interfered with He's, 
He's mad at everybody, whoever that is. Um, what I want to say just to finish up on CRTD is the, let me get away from the noise. So much in the noise. A lot of noise, however. The U.S. did so much to cause this war and prevent earlier talks to end it. They must be made to seek compromise now. The former chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. Hey, YouTube, I'm just, I'm just here reporting. I'm not, I'm not commenting. Um, on CRTD, on CRTD, I just want to say that it just makes way too much sense for the merger, for the acquisition to happen, for Jeremy to run the whole thing, and in both companies, GTII and CRTD, there are triggers happening now. In the case of GTII, I believe it's, I believe it's going to be the, I believe it's going to be the here let's just walk away from this um i believe it's going to be the uh um i lost my train of thought i apologize i but oh in the case of gtii i think it's going to be the fbi that's going to be the massive trigger but but remember what's what it also will be will be the fact that the supplier shares will disappear on the counterfeiting side because all over Wall Street there's going to be alarm bells ringing and with mar crooked market makers to honest margin clerks they're all going to stop accepting orders unless they're bona fide and um, in the case of GTII uh, sorry CRTD I think the trigger is going to be this distribution of the OG collection because Jeremy knows how to make that work as a corporate action that keeps the pressure on the back offices to somehow whittle down four, almost 400 million counterfeit shares to 50 million real shares. So I think both companies have an exciting next couple of weeks, three weeks. My final point to you. It really sounds like Gerald Salenti, but that's a young man. Um, my final point to you, if any one of these tricks, these hooks, these traps, these attempts to cause a run on, cause a run on the system, in the case of GTII, 325 million. 325 million shares, and in the case of CRTD, almost 400 million. Um, you know what I, I don't like about young people with microphones? They don't have to yell. That's why you have a microphone. Anyway, I think I might walk away from this. It's too... It's too... Uh, it's too controversial. Anyway, if any of these, if any of these traps, hooks, special dividends, that's another thing. Jeremy doesn't believe the dividends really work. I do. Uh, I believe that it was working in GTII. But anyway, we're all just trying to do our best to cause essentially a run on the system for real shares. Um, if any of these triggers work, you're going to be sold out of the stock at hundreds if not thousands of dollars and you're not going to care about a distribution, a merger, an acquisition. You're, you're going to have sold out at 500 bucks, 100 bucks, 50 bucks, 25 bucks, whatever your dream is. So anyway, I'm going to leave it at that. I'll walk, I'll walk so you can see a little bit, but this yelling. I just don't know why they have to yell. So, um, my summary on CRTD, because you're going to ask me, what do you think about the prices? 
it's a it's at 45 cents you're going to get a 20 cent distribution and roughly and um and uh you're going to you're going to um have a chance to participate in an acquisition at, at almost two dollars and and so you're risking 25 cents my opinion on the price if they don't get something done soon i think the price can drift a little lower but i think they are going to get something done soon like next week i th i expect you're going to see an announcement on the og collection next week if jeremy insists on negotiate a hard negotiation there's always the risk the two parties disengage. If that were to happen, that's kind of Katie bar the door. I think you could see much lower prices. I don't think it's going to happen. I just have to put it out there because you always ask me for my brackets, whatever the heck those are. There, see, she's not yelling anymore. It's so much better when they don't yell. Um, um, my brackets to the upside, I think in looking at the chart, GTII can go as high as 10 or $20 a share very quickly um, if it breaks through $2. $2, which is roughly the distribution price and the acquisition price at the time being, could be a stumbling block. People could sell in that range. So. I would use your best uh, money management skills to take some of your original money off the table. But if it gets up 10, 15, 20 dollars, CRTD could go to thousands. Got someone who I'm the, sure most of you know. There was and that is let's see. Of the combo couch, who is pasta it? Pasta Dardula. Pasta. It's yours. Take it away, man. I don't know who Pasta Dardula is. I don't know who Combo Couch is. I'm getting old. So anyway, I think it goes to two thousand, three thousand, five thousand dollars a share in a squeeze, in a spike. And uh, there was just a short squeeze where a stock went from eight to over two thousand in a day. So it is possible. All right, I'm going to end it right there. I'm going to wish you all the best. And guess what? Since we're at that rally, I'm going to wish you peace love and happiness so cheers i know these are going to take 20 hours to upload but here we go thanks